Uh, welcome Sabre fans and welcome to my channel. Uh, I am Ben, your host. I don't know. Uh, I'm the guy that makes all the lightsabers and does all the electronics for four sabers. Um, so because I do all those things, uh, I've just recently uploaded a video about uh, how we, oh, how I pour the chassis for the uh, the for the lightsabers that have Xeno Pixel and SD card access. So um, it got me thinking. I've done that, so I'm going to show you how I do the electronics and how I wire up the um, the tiny little look at that. It's a tiny little soundboard. That's the Xeno Pixel soundboard. You might not have seen many of them. And that's the uh, SD card with the tiny, tiny, very tiny little holes. I think that's a, you can see that, can you? That you put the wires through. Um, so yeah, the um, <laughs> something I didn't mention in the last video. Oh, the uh, the I I I don't use three D printers. Uh, everything I do is by hand. Um, I've not done anything. Uh, I think. Uh, without doing it by hand um, it's just how I feel it should be done um, people may disagree may be more expensive may cost more time I'm not entirely sure however I'm going to show you how long it takes me to do one of these it will most probably be speeded up you might not be able to tell how much it's been speeded up I think it's going to like 125% speed or something uh, just to try and get a bit through, but yes, uh, if you give me a moment, I'm going to tilt the camera so you're going to be looking down at this and uh, we'll get started. So, the first thing uh, I need to wire up the speaker. These are the speakers, the really, really nice speakers, 24mm diameter um, with extra bass. Really, really nice speakers. Uh, so, I'm just going to wire that up now my uh, soldering eye is nice and hot okay uh, sorry about the angle on this I don't know if, if I'm able to get a better angle unfortunately I think this is the best angle I can get um, So there we have it all wired up, ready to go into the chassis. So what will happen is this will go into this part here. I've already got the um, wire mesh that protects the speaker from particles and dirt that fits in. Um, and then I put that on the base of this. So I'm just going to get some super glue. Uh, the super glue is not the only thing that holds this in place. This is just just to try and lock this part on from there onwards. So that just holds this in place and keeps it there rather than it falling off, which is what I need it to do. So. I'll just put that to the side. Get rid of these wires because they're for the next lot of speakers. Right, so we're now on to the SD card. And it's really a pain in the ass to make sure I don't do it the wrong way around. Because I like to put a lot of the cables in this way. If I put them in this way, the cables are in the way of the SD card access and the SD card won't go in which is really annoying and when I keep doing it it's very frustrating so I have to make sure I turn it around but I'm not doing these ones yet because they go onto the power cables from the speaker anyway so all the wires have to be coming out the same size as the uh, SD card access so that means it has to go this way and almost in reverse 
Now, the Xenopixel base, um, I'll find one for you. So this is a, a Xenopixel base, the lightsaber blade fit, sits on top of this. And you can see the pins that sit on. And at the other end there's a small JCT cable. And that's a female plug for the JCT cable. I have to solder on the male version. You can't really see that very well, I, am, I do apologise. We'll have to solder on the male version to the board. So we'll do that now. Get it all lined up. Oops. This is what I was saying about these tiny little holes. Really awkward to get wires into them. I'll just give that's a quick wipe so it's got no excess on it. So that's one, two, three, which was positive, negative and negative. So they're in place. Um, I, once they're in place, I do like to just angle these upwards so there's less stress on the wire. I don't know if you can see that, I'll do it this way. So instead of it just sticking straight out, I just want to make sure that these are fully in and pointing upwards in the way that they're going to be going. So there's less stress and pressure on each one when it's inside the lightsaber handle. So that's that one done. Uh, I've got some cables uh, all pre-cut ready for this. I, I don't think you want to see me. <laughs> don't want to see me like cutting wire to the right length. Uh, so this one goes on there, and I want that yellow cable to be on the inside because that makes my life easier. Um, these are 24 gauge wires, I think. Um, I think the 24 gauge. I'd have to double check. Just give us some excess solder on there. Okay. Okay, so that's the negative. So the reason why there's two wires on this, this one goes to the power, this one goes to the switch, and then there's also another wire that comes from the negative power um, for the DC charge to the switch as well to illuminate the switch. Uh, so the next one is the big thick positive cable and that goes on there. They have to go in the exact same place every time if not things will have problems. But I've been doing this for quite some while now, some time now, and it's very much almost a second nature. Okay, so that's that one, that's done. It then goes on to a thinner red wire. Now, this is only, uh, this is half the size of the cable I've just done. These two cables are for the power to the board from the charging port. So they need to be 24 gauge so they can handle the current. This however, even though it is a positive wire being red and it is carrying a positive current, uh, it doesn't carry as much as 5 volts uh, because it's only going to illuminate the switch. So we can get away with having a slightly thinner wire which then benefits on the amount of space taken up inside the hilt. And again, this is just the switch. This is actually just a one single dedicated wire for the switch. Because on the switch you have <clears throat> uh, all the lightsabers come with a momentary switch. And the way that the momentary switch works is um, there's two points 
in the switch and when you press the button they connect providing a complete circuit and when you release the button the momentary switch the circuit breaks again um, so you need one yellow wire for one side of the connection and the other yellow wire for the other side of the connection so when they meet it works and also the it has power with the other cables so that's why the four cables coming out the board and I nearly done that sometimes I do wonder if it'd be easier if there was a fifth hole in here um, I'm not entirely sure so here you can see sorry it's very hard to get this to focus see if I can get my head out of the way um, zoom in on me uh, it's, it's just not zooming in however they've got the parts soldered on so I take some of these and I'm just going to actually this one wire could do with a little bit more solder actually so I'm just going to do that now I, I always want the the entire area to be completely soldered it's just not wanting to solder That done it? Yes, there we are. We've got them. Uh, yeah, so you always want to check the points, make sure that everything is fully working. There's a little straight wire coming out there. Which you'll want to get rid of. Even though that wire is pre tinned. Uh, Pre-tinning basically means that the wire has had some solder on it and uh, it's not just going to fall apart, it's ready to be used. So I'll just take off all these uh, little outcropping parts. That positive could do with some more solder as well, so I'll just do that now. It's better to make sure that every one of these is fully done. Uh, and this is what I do for every single one of these. And I'll just give that black a, a bit more as well, the negative cable. Like I said, at the end of the day, it's much better to make sure that every single cable and wire is fully soldered in place yeah that's beautiful uh, fully soldered in place and then you don't have any problems later and the, there's less uh, it removes the chance of the uh, the wire being pulled out which is the last thing you want to happen once it's inside your lightsaber right so that's all the wires done on that side um, the next point of call is to Put everything in place so I'm just gonna grab a battery okay so we've got the battery uh, these are the ones I use they come with a, uh, a larger JST JCT uh, female plug um, but because it's going in a chassis I'm going to adjust this a little bit I don't need the plug because it's not plugging in uh, I'll just be one second Okay, so I'm going to, with the chassis, I do need to extend the length of these cables so that they can be then cut down to the length I need them once they're inside the chassis. And it's all, all measured out to the right length. I'm just going to do this now. That's really annoying, I don't like big blobs. There we go, that's much nicer. Much neater now. And time to do the positive cable as well. Uh, 
Now, normally, I'd actually twist the wires together, but because this is such a, a tiny connection and it's never going to have any movement, uh, I actually just push them into each other. Uh, so it means I can get a much smaller join, which actually is a lot more beneficial. Actually, we won't need the red power one, do we? That's, uh, that's the old version. The power switch goes on to the master button, which you see there. So... Actually, I just need to cut that down a little bit, because we don't need the full length. So that just sits on there, and then we just solder that on. Want to do that solder on the switch quite quickly because this is quite sensitive to heat, which is frustrating. Um, so I always test it to make sure that it is working, and it is. And then we get the positive cable that just goes on there now I didn't trim down I didn't trim down the uh, the positive the other part of the switch here for a specific reason and you'll see why in a moment I'm going to take a little bit off only two millimeters though. Right, so now we've got the battery. I'm just going to find my little tester. Right, so I found my little tester and it's just a tiny little LED. And the reason why I'm having this is because I want to make sure there's no power coming out of this at the moment. So it's currently off, I've just turned it on and there you can see it has power, press it again, it is now turned off, so that's safe. I'm just going to put a little bit of heat shrink around the negative wire where we soldered it together to give it a bit more length because we'll need that length later on. So. go that's that part done <sighs> and now we uh, assemble the chassis it's a little tricky to get it in sometimes you just have to use a tool there's a film I saw years ago and there's a quote in it saying for every job there is a perfect tool and I do believe that is true from life experience if you don't have that tool it's going to be a lot harder to do <laughs> so I have to get the the hot glue gun so I'll just turn that on so I'll just show you what's happening now so we've got the battery in here nice and fitted inside I do love love how this battery fits inside um, you'll see there's a, a dip in the battery case the reason for the dip is the battery um, I'll actually go and grab you another one so you can see better so the battery actually has as you can see this bump in it and that is actually a PCB protection so it stops any surge of power going to it um, or anything like that or overcharging happening it it's not um, it's not invincible if you use a 9 volt charger or something faster like 26 watts or 9, 60 odd watt charger you know if you use if you pump in enough power it will blow the PCB protection it should still hopefully protect the battery but for a safety feature 
all the batteries uh, in Four Sabres come with PCB protection, uh, specifically to try and protect it and protect our customers. So that's why there's this cut out section here, because that's where the PCB goes to allow the wires to go around the side. Um, right, let's see if this has got... Okay, we're nearly there with the heat gun. So what, what we're going to do is we're going to put a blob of glue underneath this switch which will hold it in place. Once that's in, the speaker wire will then wrap around and under this little part here, and then I'll put some glue in there to hold those in place so that the wires for the speaker and the switch are very, very secure. Uh, then I'll be fitting the board with the wires to the board to make sure that all works. I will also program the SD card, and you will see it turn on for the very first time. So let's see if we've got some glue now. Right, so a bit of glue there. Just grab these two, push it in place and hold it down. Just hold it down for a few seconds, uh, just to make sure it's taken place. If that, that glue gun, uh, I didn't I, I knew the glue gun, uh, I've only just started using them. I knew the glue guns would uh, melt the glue rod or glue stick um, and then you could eject the glue onto wherever you want it to be. I never realized how incredibly hot the glue guns actually do get. I was very surprised when I found out. So the switch is now in place as you can see uh, and what I'm doing is I'm getting the speaker wire like that and I'm just trying to loop it over and catch it. There we go. So I've looped it over and I've caught it underneath there. I'm just going to put a, a quick blob of glue there as well. And that holds all that in place. This job blows sometimes. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm supposed I'm age of dads now, so dad jokes could possibly come out in these videos. I also put some glue on the other side as well, just to hold just to hold those in place. So we've now got the SD card effectively assembled, which is great. We're now going to put on the SD card onto the sashi. I can't say that word for the life of me. And I'm going to measure out how much I want of this wire. So, just turn that off for now so it doesn't get ludicrously hot. We want it to go to there, which is fine. We want the power to be about that length, and I can get rid of that piece, and we want the positive to come to there, and then that. So I'm just going to quickly trim the wires now. Okay, so I've trimmed the wires, so now we have to thread these extremely small wires through an even smaller hole which is not the most fun at times because it this is most probably the the hardest part of doing the install I would say is these wires okay okay so we just need to Make sure there's enough on the. Yep, that looks fine. Oops. Uh, and then we want to do the next speaker wire. Damn. Didn't get it in the hole and th frayed the wire. Right, okay, it's in the hole now, it's all looking good. Uh, Nope, don't need to go through the hole. 
Okay, so we do the same again. A good blob of solder. Hold that solder iron there just to make sure it's definitely gone through and it's soaked into the point. Okay, now for the black wire. The, the positive and negative are always the hardest ones to do on this. Okay, so I want it to line up neatly. Yep, that looks good. I'm just going to make sure there's no excess on the solder. The cleaner this soldered point is, the better it is for the board, for me, because I'll tell you what, it can be an absolute nightmare trying to get this to work when uh, uh, it's not, you try and get the SD card in and there's a big bump, big lump, pool, big thing of solder in the way, we'll go for thing. Now for the positive, okay there's no wires sticking out, which is perfect, we'll do the same again. Okay, yep, that looks good. And I can also tell, and I also know there's no power going to this board from the battery because we didn't hear any of the, the board say anything. Like SD card error, which is one of my most favorite things to hear on a daily basis. SD card error. Take off these as cleanly to the board as I can. Okay, right, so those are the now bits done. Um, I'm going to get some of this heat shrink, which when this sets is actually really, really strong stuff. So we need two squares, one, two. The reason why I cut off two pieces, one will go around the speaker, which will hold or give a lot more strength to the speaker connected to the base of the uh, chassis and the other one even though this is going to be hot glued in place uh, the other one just really clamps it in there and makes sure it never does move again so we'll just wait for the hot glue gun to warm up so I can use that while we're waiting for hot glue gun I'm just going to pause because I'm going to update the SD card with the sound fonts and everything it needs. So I'll just be one moment. Okay, so I've updated the SD card. I'm gonna put that in now. And there you go, it fits in perfectly. I'll just show you that again. So because we've cut off all the points there right down to the board, that just slides in perfectly fine. Uh, see if the hot glue gun's working. Oops, we need another glue stick. I better put one in. Go through these things really fast. Luckily, the glue sticks aren't the most expensive thing in the world. Right, there we go. Move that aside. give it a moment like I said the glue gets very very hot so okay so we'll just hold that there for a moment or two and then while that's doing that I'll just get this ready now we'll get the other one ready okay right so I'm just going to slide that down and over. 
so it's just about there and then very gently get this to fit into place That's that one done. So now that SD card is not going to move. It's not going to come out. It's permanently going to be fixed there. We'll do this one as well. Which you have to do here, obviously. So I do four drums. And there we go. So that is the sd card and sashi sassy i can't say I'm, i do apologize i cannot say that word i'm just going to give it a quick test so you just leave the two switch wires i'll just uh oops get a bit of the wire exposed so we can make a connection Okay, so when I turn this on, we should hear SD card update or something. I can't remember what it is. Upgrade. 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 Success. Okay, so that means it's on. And if you give me a second, I'll get another, uh, one of the Xenopixel bases because that lights up as well. So it's a good way to test it, which is to be honest, what I always do anyway. So this is uh, the base for the NeoPixel uh, lightsaber. Excuse me. I'll just um, cut off this. I don't know why. I always cut it off like that. I'm not too sure why. Uh, once that's off, I like to give this a few coils. Um, it just makes the wire stay straight. Makes it easy to fit inside the lightsaber. So. Just quickly do that, and we'll connect that to the LED, and uh, let's turn it on, shall we? Force saving on. And there we are. Put in a lower volume for you. There we go. So that's everything working. So apart from putting the switch on and the charging port, that's all now done. Anyway, I'm getting, I'm getting sidetracked. What I normally do now is I turn off the power to the whole thing, um, just so uh, I don't trigger it off, because it it can really it really makes you jump if you, if it turns on and you're not expecting it. But yeah, so that is it. That is the SD card setup, chassis made, and ready to go into a new.